It's a disease that has the potential of wiping out the Central California citrus industry. And this is the very last area in the world that you can grow fresh citrus. There is an insect that actually carries this bacterium. The insect is called a psyllid, but it's very much like a mosquito. If they happen to carry this a bacterium, the bacterium that causes citrus greening disease, then they will spit that bacterium into the plant, and that is how the plant becomes infected, making the fruit appear smaller, the fruit appears green, and it ends up having a metallic, very bitter and sour taste to it. No citrus is immune, and all trees regardless of what their origin is, will eventually succumb to this disease and they will die. The impact of the disease potentially in California could be worse and it could happen faster because the Florida orange industry is mainly there to provide orange juice. The industry was able to respond to the presence of the disease by blending the juice to some extent to get rid of the flavor taint that is caused by the presence of the bacterium. But here in California, the industry is almost entirely a fresh market industry. The impact of this disease on a fresh fruit citrus industry is much more catastrophic. So if you like to put lemon on your, on your fish or on your seafood, or you like to use limes in your guacamole or, or any type of food where you actually put citrus juice in, that's going to be gone. You're going to have to find other ways to acidify the food, and that's going to change flavor and it's going to change everything on how we eat. So I think it's, it's a huge problem and I don't think a lot of people really recognize how far reaching or even think about how they consume citrus in their daily life. It's not just, you know, picking up an orange and eating an orange, but it's, it's used in so many different foods. There is not going to be any one magic silver bullet that's going to completely eradicate the disease. So we need to have early detection right now in order to stop the disease from spreading. With our work, we're trying to be able to detect this disease very early on before it's detectable using the DNA-based methods. And we've proven that once the bacterium comes into the tree, the entire tree puts out a response and we can detect that response using our technology. And this is what we're hoping to move forward to help combat this disease, essentially identifying trees and then having those trees removed. This will buy us some time Long term, what we really need is resistant citrus that can't be infected by the pathogen. And one way that we're trying to do that is to identify resistance genes and introduce them together or simultaneously into one genetic background so that we would then have sweet orange that would have multiple genes for resistance against the pathogen that would be truly resistant in the field. We have to figure out how to keep our trees and our orchard safe and free of this long, long being here in Central California as long as possible. There are a few things that we are doing that are giving us hope. I'm fairly optimistic that we should be able to address this and the scientists and industry will rise to the challenge. It would be better for us to nip this thing in the bud while it's uh, still in its early stages uh, and so that we can preserve fresh citrus for generations to come.